All right, I'm going to do a quick video on how to uh, make a home brew, but do it without buying the liquid malt extract. It's going to be an all grain beer, a little bit more time consuming, but more rewarding. This one is uh, dedicated to my nephew, Ben, who's laid up right now and not feeling the best. Um, and I know he really wants to get into this kind of hobby. So Ben, um, best of luck on a speedy recovery. We'll do this together sometime soon. All right, first phase of anything when you're home brewing is sterilizing. So I've got all my stuff out and I've got uh, Star Sand, which is a um, commercial cleaning product, kitchen grade. And I'm, I'm sterilizing my pails. I'll be sterilizing my, my homemade mash tun. And um, my boiling pot is sterilizing along with my um, copper uh, coil cooler that I made. Now these are the greens that I'll be using to make the uh, malt and homebrew. It, uh, it consists of nine pounds of domestic two-row um, and then two pounds of flaked corn. And then I have two ounces of hops and um, somewhere mixed in here there's another eight ounces of specialty grains that uh, they combined in with the, uh, the the roll. These grains come directly from downtown Shakopee from raw malting. So pretty cool, it's all local. Now I'm gonna get about nine gallons of spring water. And this is a artesian well in Eden Prairie called Frederick Miller Spring. And this is what I'll be using for my homebrew. I'm now heating the strike water and the strike water is what I'll be um, using in the mash tin and we'll be pouring the greens in with the strike water and it's got to be 152 degrees and it's got to be that temperature for an hour. So in the transfer process, I'm going to heat it up to about 170 degrees and then I'll transfer it into my mash tin, which is a Coleman cooler essentially. So now I'm adding the grains into the mash tin. This is the 170 degree temperature water that was just heated and we'll finish adding the grains. And you got to be careful when you do this so that you don't have dry pockets. So kind of do it gradually and then I'll stir them in. Stir them in like so. And once we've got them stirred in, I'll shut the lid to the cooler, the mash tun, and I'll put a temperature gauge on it. And it's got to be at 152 degrees. And it's going to be at 152 degrees for 60 minutes. And what that does is it converts all the starches that are in this grain into sugars, and the sugar is what ferments the beer. And um, this is the biggest difference between an all grain kit and when you buy a kit with uh, the malt extract already created. That's a brown, chocolatey, syrupy type of malt, and it makes your beers a lot darker. And so this one is going to be almost like a blonde beer. Uh, but it's a cream ale, is what they call it. So that looks good. The temperature of the strike water has got to be 152 degrees, and as you can see, it's a little bit warm. So it's important to have it at 152. So I'm just going to add some ice and try to bring that temperature down a little bit. been an hour and this is the mash and this is um, the water that basically is creating the wart so this is um, 152 degrees with the grain in there and now I'm going to uh, drain a little bit of this off and then I'll begin the sparge process and I've got water here that's about 170 degrees and I'll sparge or drizzle water on top of this and there will be a, a, a 
basically a, a, a cake of grain down there that this water will filter through and it will create the wort that I'll use to brew the beer. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just draining some of the wort out of the mash tin and I uh, just do it until it's clear and it's actually it looks clear so I'm gonna put this back into the mash tin and I'll begin to sparge the beer so I begin to sparge the wort or the water with the, the grain into my boiling pot and this process is going to take anywhere from 60 to 90 minutes and it's a slow collection of the malt and the wort that um, I've created in the mash tun over the past hour so it's still 152 degrees in here and I'll keep about an inch or two of liquid on top of the grain bed and then I will sparge 170 degree water over the top of the grains to keep the water to flow and you'll see that I made a a pan, a sparging pan there's many other ways of doing it but I drilled tiny holes into a cake pan and I'm going to now gradually pour hot water, 170 degree water over the grain, the cake of the grain, so that I can continue to sparge into my boiling pan. And I've tested it, it's very sweet, so it's converted, this, the, the, the first process converted the starch into sugar. This is a pretty redneck way of doing it, but it's cost effective and it works well for me. So I'm just pouring this water, it's 170 degrees, and it will slowly drizzle on top of the grain cake below, and it will drizzle down into my boiling pot. Sparging continues. And this is what we've collected so far. You got to do a lot of planning ahead when you do home brewing, and uh, it's easy to forget some of the simple things. But this is actually liquid yeast that I'll be using for fermenting the beer. And as you can see, I um, I uh, have activated it, so it's it's um, it's starting to do its thing. And I'll be adding it into my um, my beer just before I put it into the primary fermenter. But uh, this is one thing that um, in the step of things can be forgotten very, very easily and I've done it myself. And it takes three hours or four hours for this to uh, be ready to uh, put into your beer. So I did this very first thing to make sure that it was ready. So the sparging is completed. And um, you can see the green cake and I'm I'm just draining off the last little bit. I've mashed the beer, I've sparged it, and now I'm boiling the wort. And this process is going to take 60 minutes and um, that now that it's at a rolling boil I'm going to add hops. These are Cascade hops. Uh, one ounce now and then I'll add another ounce a couple minutes before the boiling is done. So we get about two minutes left of the boil and I have one more package, one ounce of Cascade hops and I'm going to add that to the boil and we'll give it another minute or two and then we'll pull it off the stove and cool the wort and uh, we'll be able to transfer it into the primary uh, fermenter. All right, I've taken the wort off of the stove 
And now I'm cooling it down using my uh, wart chiller, something that I made out of flexible copper tubing. And uh, this will get the temperature of the wart down from about 180 degrees to 80 degrees in less than 10 minutes. So now that that's been cooled down, I'm going to pour that beer now into my pail. This is my fermentation pail. I've got two filters. I've got just a regular filter here and I've got a, another filter that um, essentially all it is is a paint filter for five gallon pails. It's a really thin fiber mesh. After pouring the wort into my fermentation pail, this is what I've collected from my strainer. So here's the yeast and I'm just going to simply dump that, pour it into the wort. So now I've added the yeast into the wort and, and um, I, have t I have another sterilized pail and so I'm going to pour uh, the wort into one pail and then back into another and I'll probably do this three or four times just to introduce a lot of oxygen into the wort and then that will start the fermentation process with the yeast. Now I've just completed uh, pouring the wort back and forth between the two pails and you can see that clearly um, there's a lot of foam and whatnot within the actual fermentation pail and uh, that will really give the yeast a lot of oxygen to start fermenting this beer. So I've now sealed the primary fermentation pail and put an airlock onto the lid so as the beer ferments it will uh, release the gases as it ferments and um, it's going to uh, make the beer. So what I'm going to do now is I'll just take this down to my furnace room where year-round the temperature is probably between 65 and 67 degrees and that's really the optimal temperature for fermenting beer. So I'm going to put that down in my furnace room for two weeks and then I will transfer that into my glass carboy after which two weeks will go by I will transfer into a keg and uh, begin to put CO2 on top of the keg and uh, carbonate the beer which are part of a couple of other videos that I've made. So Ben, I made this on behalf of you because I know that this is something that you want to do um, I know that you're not feeling uh, the best right now, and um, uh, we're praying for you. So, once you get back on your feet, come on up, and this will be ready for you. So, looking forward to sharing a, a pint of Liberty Ale, um, Liberty Ale, which uh, is kind of a blonde beer, and... Um, I think it will be quite refreshing. Liberty Cream Ale is what uh, what this is. So that's it for now.